Note well. Anybody know what note well is? I think this group probably knows what note well is, but I'm. <laughs> yes. It's fair. Next slide. The agenda is exactly what we uh, announced prior. Um, we will have an overview by each of the authors in a, a random order. Um, we will have uh, uh, Elliot's prepared a little bit of comparison just to uh, have you thinking in, in, in uh, uh, interesting ways, let's say, and we'll have a discussion. Um, and in the last 10 minutes, we will take some hums and see if we have any consensus or not. We'll see. Um, and then depending on that, we'll figure out what our next steps are. Any comments on the agenda? Okay. Let's go right in. Neville, you're up. Okay, well. Neville, do you want to share your slides or shall I share them for you? Would you share them for me, please? <laughs> I'm starting to feel a bit computer challenged. It really is high time. I bought a more modern machine, but I like my old machine. Um, well, okay. I think mine was the first of the of the uh, drafts to be posted, and at the time, which is back in June, um, it was starting to irritate me that um, some of the people making proposals on the list didn't seem to appreciate how long it takes to make changes to the um, series uh, or how much uh, work and effort um, Heather had put into uh, her move towards what turned out to be XML to RFC version 3. So she started that not very long after she got to, after she was appointed and it took her two years and three rather noisy boffs to um, come up with a um, RFC 6949. That's what set out the requirements for the new format. And then she got together a design team, which was, I can't remember, it was eight or 10 people, but it was a whole lot of different people um, who understood the various things that were involved, HTML and um, style sheets. And uh, I'm sorry to say, me as the SVG person. Uh, and in the end, uh, which took um, another couple of years, we uh, and actually no, it took, it, it took um, five or six years after that, which got us to the set of RFCs, 79, 90 through 98, which um, spelled it all out. And after that, it was passed to the tools team who um, found suitable contractors to do the work involved in getting it going. And then it was left to Heather and the um, production center to start trying to get, getting it into use and um, testing it without doing bad things to the productivity, the, the flow of RFCs through the uh, production center. Um, and my sort of takeaway point from that, the big summary was that the RFC uh, influence in big projects, big changes, really is something that takes years and it doesn't seem to me to lend itself to hiring an outside expert for a short time. Um, and then I got on from there, uh, which was following up on posts from Brian and Mike and put up a sort of straw man RFC series editorial board, which should be well separated from the IAB uh, and have strong input from the um, series input streams. But that particular proposal has clearly been overtaken by um, Brian and Mike's and um, Martin's um, drafts after it. So I'm, I'm not going to go any further with that. Um, and I've got a couple of other sort of comments. One of the things which turned up on the list recently was um, the question of updating the style guide. That is something which um, the uh, RFC editors uh, and whoever is uh, looking after the series at that, well, on a day-to-day -day basis, in this case, John Levine, um, need to sort out. And um, John put a uh, post up to the list pointing out that this is something which needs somebody there all the time because uh, changes have to be made to keep things moving. And it seems to me that John's doing a good job on that. So that's my summary um, of uh, my draft. 
And as I said, it's, it's a background draft, but it does point out the need for a long-term um, interest uh, in, in, to carry through any, any changes which we might decide to make. And by the way, I'm not against changes um, particularly, but they need to be worked through carefully. And um, the, the other drafts seem to handle the question of consensus on that pretty well. If there's any questions, I'm happy to respond. Or am I just talking myself? <laughs> we can hear you. Any questions? We're at this point. This is questions for clarification only. That's that's what questions exactly. at this point yeah, are. Sure. Any questions? Not hearing any. Good. All right. Uh, Martin. Long slides. These are, these are not my slides. Um, in fact, no. I did not send slides because I intended to use words. Yeah, no slides. Um, As I recall, no slides. Indeed. Go ahead. Um, I, part of the part of that is I don't think there's any need for a. Um, oh, thanks, John. Um, there is a jabber room. Um, I don't think there's any need to go over the, the details of the proposal. There's a number of questions that people have had with respect to uh, particularly things like the style guide, which um, uh, I think sort of goes to this question of what the uh, strategic direction needs to be as opposed to the individual tactical things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. I believe that the, the, the job that Neville has articulated in his presentation there was the need for long-term strategic oversight. Um, ooh, echo has been banned. I'll have to try that myself. Um, long-term strategic <laughs> oversight and the, the sort of day-to-day -day tactical things that may be involved in making decisions about whether you put a comma in this particular place or um, as, as I recently experienced, the, the style of uh, reference that was necessary for a particular uh, external reference. And so um, the idea there is that um, in the model that I've described was that there, there would be greater responsibility for the team that does the editing and the publication side of things for making those day-to-day -day technical decisions. And part of their the responsibility would then be to uh, capture those places where they made decisions that weren't captured in style guides and uh, the strategic side of things would be able to make then decisions about whether those um, individual tactical decisions represented a need for strategic direction and would essentially be uh, in a position to approve or uh, reject those things. I think the suggestion was that um, there was a um, a void that was necessarily present in this case, and that um, when when these small tactical decisions came up, that someone would need to be making those um, making a decision there. And um, the the conclusion that I've come to is that the uh, the RPC, as they currently are, are competent to make a lot of those decisions. The the question is um, whether whether they. Um, uh, I apologise. I've had five hours of sleep thanks to an interim. I'm losing my train of thought. So they need to make tactical decisions, and um, I think they're competent to do that. The trick will be to capture those and make sure they're properly recorded. Um, I think that's basically all I needed to say at this point. All right. Any uh, questions for clarifications? I'm hearing none. And one quick question I had on actually Martin's, and because the language is the same on Brian's that I never asked, was do you allow for the LLC to delegate? Could whoever's running a Sorting machine, stop it, please. Uh, 
Okay, I don't know who that is. Um, I wish I could figure out who that was. I think it's Brian. Okay, so let's hopefully. The hell is that coming from? So coming in and out. Okay. Well, he's muted, so hopefully it'll stay. Um, so the question I had was that uh, most of the the <clears throat> the proposals we all have have mostly settled on the LLC as the position for the contracting of whatever. Um, in both yours and Brian's. You've got a, an ability to delegate that, but you don't go any de into any more detail. And as I read it, we could end up with you delegating right back to the IEB, who could then delegate to an RSOC-like like organization. Could you talk a little bit more about what you had in mind there, please? Yeah, I, I think this is a good question, Mike. This is one area that I, I, I may have decided something here and Brian's not really changed it. So I'm, I'm not going to answer for Brian as to whether or not this is his decision. But but my thinking here was that this was um, probably something that the that the LLC, specifically Jay, might decide to assign a manager for, for instance, uh, if that was necessary. I don't think it's necessary. I think the, the delegation of the LLC is probably to the ex executive director. Um, and that's the nature of that delegation and that's all that happens um but um i think that's a deliberately a matter for the llc to to deal with and that was my my decision if we want to bring that into scope for this discussion i, th I think it's well within our charter to do that but i i didn't think it was worth belaboring that point Yeah, and the reason I asked it because I was very specific about making sure that it was delegated to a fiduciary of the LLC, basically a J or somebody like a J who's under contract or or related to them, as opposed to a general delegation to a person or a group, as you as you quoted there. So I just wanted. I, I say, yeah, and I, if you'd I said, think yours is reasonable. I think that's perfectly reasonable. I, I okay. don't have a strong opinion on this point. That was one of my biggest sticking points with respect to your proposal. So thanks. Okay, thanks. Brian, you there? Which Brian do you mean? No, sorry, Brian Rosen. I, I am here and speaking to mute. Oh, okay. Any other questions for clarifications? Uh, I actually have found and fixed my problem. And I should be able to uh, share this window. Ha, huh, look at that. All right. Is that your slides, Brian? Those are my slides. Ah, oh, sorry. What have I done? And you should be able to actually share the program rather than the window. So that'll get a bigger picture that's, of that. That's what I did. I said, uh, oh. let's okay. go back to here. Never mind. Um, share content. I mean, I can try it from the browser and open it up in the browser. Um, that might work. Um, need to get the right ones in the browser. We want Brian's slides now, right? Y yes, we want Brian's slides now. That's which, what I want to do. Which is, <laughs> and you're messing with mics. I know, I know, I know, okay. I know. Uh, I'm just going to get to his and try it in the browser and see whether that uh, share web browser. Um, okay, now does that show the right thing? Or we we got to click on like explode it out to be the largest and then we'll pick up the window. Get full screen. Get full screen. Okay, I, yeah, I can go to full screen. I can definitely do that. How's that? Yeah, that did not. Oh, there we go. Yep, yeah, good enough. Should All I right. start? 
Oh. Okay, this is pretty short. There's only two slides. Uh, and a lot of my material was copied from, from Martin's draft anyway. Uh, and by the way, I do agree with his uh, answer on the previous question about the LLC uh, possibly delegating, but only within its own power, if you like. Um, the main difference in what I'm proposing is that the working group it's set up should be very clearly labeled as advisory rather than uh, whatever it was called in his draft. Um, I very, very strongly support the idea of an open working group. I think that gets by some of the problems we've had in the past. I believe we should be clear in our minds that the series is to serve the whole community, not the ITF. And that's why I have a preference for writing the um, responsibility at ISOC and not at the IAB. I realize that that may not turn out to be possible, but it's my personal preference. However, where I think I mainly disagree with Martin is that I'm pretty convinced, uh, for reasons that Neville alluded to, that we need a professional uh, advisor, not an authority, because we've had trouble with split authority in the previous model, but an advisor who is a serious professional in the business of publishing, not a professional in the business of a protocol design. And incidentally, I would propose adding an RFC editorial RFC stream for documents that are about the series as opposed to documents that are about something else. I want to emphasize, I believe editorial authority is not an issue. It's per stream. We seem to have consensus on that. And I want to be clear that the management of the contract side of things, the, the objectives, the targets, all that stuff, uh, it's part of the LLC's job. I don't think we should extract it from the LLC's line of command. If you can move down to the second slide. Ryan, can I ask you a question on that slide before you move on? Uh, sure. You use the word set strategy by an advisor. No, by the group, the working group. Okay, which is very similar to what's in, in Martin's draft. I see. I I get it now. Okay, thanks. So, going on slide two. Uh, here's a little bit more about the advisor. A senior professional with deep knowledge of technical publishing. We've seen that before. Provides expert advice to the working group and to the production team, because I can't imagine the production team not needing that kind of advice from time to time. The person would be expected to act as a thought leader. You know, we don't formalize that in the IETF, but it's pretty clear that we do have people who function as thought leaders in individual working groups, so not necessarily the working group chairs. And I put this person under a professional services contract with the LLC, because I don't see any other way to uh, pay them, and it's not going to be done for free. And this is a point that's not mentioned in my draft and should have been, the hiring of this advisor would take place by the LLC, but it would have to be take place on advice from community sources. And the only one we've got in the model would be the working group chairs. And that's an area that might need more work. You know, there might have to be a selection committee like there was for the, the old RSC role. Uh, but basically, I'm trying to rework Martin's model to include the role of this advisor because I think we need such a person. And I'm trying to make sure that person is not stuck in part of a matrix management model, which is one of the things I think we had going wrong before. So that's it. Okay. Any questions for clarification? So this is Lucy, and I have a question for clarification here that sort of rolls up Neville's advice on long-time strategy and Martin's draft and your draft. I'm concerned about where consensus happens across the streams, and the format work is a good example of that. And I want to know where in this model the senior advisor 
gets authority other than being the editorial manager of the editorial stream? The um, my answer is that this is why there are chairs for the the advisory working group, and they determine consensus according to ITA time rules. And that's why I want to link back to ISOC as a supreme authority when there's dispute. But I think that's the chain of authority, the working group chairs, and then whoever you know, is, is the final court of appeal for those working group chairs. So I specifically, the advisor is helping to form consensus, but does not determine the consensus. That's my answer. So, 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 so that board is responsible for developing community consensus. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Martin? So, I, I, I think I agree with <clears throat> with Brian to the extent that it's um, a working group process, and and we have we have an understood um, process for that. You said one thing that I will take a little bit of exception to. I th I don't know if, if Brian caught this or not. But um, you said, how does this advisor gain authority? And I think the um, the point here is that there's there's no strong authority vested in this individual. Brian's suggesting a, an advisor here, and I'm I would I would have a similar role um, on a um, an ad hoc basis. Um, at, that is, someone be, would be contracted as needs dictate rather than on a permanent basis, but. Um, again, that person would provide advice, not um, be expected to make authoritative decisions. I, and, and I'm fine with that as long as there is somewhere that consensus is being managed right. across all of the communities of interest. Right. And, and I think both both Brian and I say that this this working group model is is where those people go to take their concerns and, and work through them. So then following up on the ISOC as opposed to IAB question, when there's a dispute about a consensus call, where does that go? So um, I propose the dispute about a consensus call we go to the IAB. Um, Brian has suggested that they go to the ISOC board, I think it was in the proposal. That's correct. I mean, it needs work for start. We don't know if ISOC would agree to do it, but I, the reason I don't like this being terminating, if you like, at the IEB is that you know we need to be very clear that you know, a lot of people read RFCs who aren't in our community. So even if you if you consider the reading community as well as the writing community, I think we need something a little bit broader as our source of authority. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and that. I think that's a gap in all our models. Any other questions for clarification? Okay. Can you go back to the first page real quick? Yes. And I'll save it for later. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, any any other questions? All right, so we are now going to Mike. Let me try sharing my own. Okay. Thanks. Uh, stop sharing. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, so my model is is actually sort of similar to what we've currently got right now. We have an expert that's hired on a long-term basis to provide knowledge that we don't normally have. Call it the RSC, call it the advisor, whatever. The the actual title versus the roles are going to be defined in whatever contracts we end up putting together. So I think with respect to that, I'm probably similar to Brian and Neville and maybe not so much with Mark because I don't because I do not believe this can be done on an ad hoc basis and that's my major difference with respect to him. Um, when I looked at Mark and Brian's document, especially the beginnings from Mark, I looked at the diagrams and 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 was 
was bothered by the fact that strategy seemed to flow through the LLC, and I knew that wasn't the case. And part of the problem was that we were combining two different two different relationship models, and we needed to be splitting those into pieces. So that's what I did here. This first one is describing the contract and the personnel relationships. And similar to what Neville put together, this is a RFC series editorial board model where the stakeholder, the direct stakeholders for the series are the primary inputs to how the series is done. And that is the stream managers for the IAB, the independent stream manager, and the other stream managers, plus three at large members, including one from ISOC, if we can get them to go along with it. Um, the LLC is responsible for the hiring and firing. Recommendations come in from the RS, RSDB for how what they should do there, but the final decisions are the LLCs based on the contract on on what the the community has always said, already said with respect to the documents on how we want to do this. So the RSEB is not the final answer here. The LLC is going to be looking at, um, is going to be taking a look at what's going on and saying, okay, yeah, we need to continue or not with respect to that. Um, let's see. The operational model is quite a bit simpler than when you split, when you break this all out. Again, Coming from Neville's bot model, we create a second, we create a new stream, and I call it series, I'm, it should, I should be stream here, the editorial stream. And this is where we put all the documents to describe in, a meta, in the meta content of how the RFC series is put together, published, evolves, and things along those lines. The RFC is there as the hired gun to work with the RSEB to create those policies, document them, have them approved by the RSEB for publication within the stream, and then executed by the RSC, the RPC, and other contractors. Um, this is, the, this is the, the segment that I really wanted Elliot to put onto the slide that he's going to show next, because I thought strategic decisions was, was the wrong way of thinking about it you need to be thinking about each of the pieces of them. So the, the concept of what the strategy is, is the RRC and the RCB working partnership with community input. Again, the stream, the stream managers are gonna have the biggest input with respect to this because they're the ones that are trying to get documents published. The RRC is then gonna be responsible for dealing with actually writing down what the concepts are and the RCB gets the final vote before they get published on the in the uh, in the stream. That is a, a nice manageable model. And then finally the execution is the RSC, the RPC, the uh, contracts, again with RSCB advice, not control, because again, the contract is with the LLC, not with the RSCB. So anyway, this is I didn't change. I don't think we need to change a lot about the publication streams right now. Mainly, I wanted to get us away from the model of um, two levels of indirection on people directing other people. Uh, but our stock over the RE, our, over the RC series editor um, was just handled very badly, in in my opinion. So anyway, that's it. Uh, questions for clarification? Okay. Um, Elliot, you uh, want to present your slides? You want me to do it yeah, or do you want to present it yourself? I'll, I'll present mine. Okay. Just give me a sec here. All right. Let's see here. I click on this button and there Start we show. go. Yeah. Uh, the slideshow or the the wrong we one. We see we see your your screen it's an with all the extra screen. notes. How's that better? That's much better. Yes. All right. So this is Elliot's informal comparison, and it's necessarily incomplete. Why is it necessarily incomplete? Because um, 
poor people uh, went to great lengths to write down their thoughts in, in far more detail than one can fit on one slide. Um, so, but this is just a little bit about, you know, how you might organize your thinking and you may completely disagree with any of the rows, columns, or content uh, that, that you see here. It's just my view of things. And, and if you agree, that's great that this is the view. If not, you know, feel free to make your own. Um, the, you know, we have four drafts. Um, you, you will, I think, find that uh, the, the first two here um, really have the same sort of root, and the second two have the same root as, as is convenient. Um, the uh, going down on columns, these I spotted, and or at least I think are close to correct. The RPC function under Neville's and, and uh, Mike's proposals are both is 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 pretty much as is. Um, they're not. They're, they're pretty much being asked to do much the same as as to what they're doing, at least so far as I could tell. Um, and of course, um, after I'm finished, please feel free to correct anything. That, that you think I got wrong. Um, under um, uh, Brian's and uh, Martin's uh, proposals, um, what we have is an, a new thing, which is the RFC editor program. And please tell me if I got the acronym right. Um, uh, that essentially is the, the RPC function with perhaps a little bit more. Um, oh, hey, sorry about that. Now, what happened here? What's that? Um, it's pretty uh, pretty much the um, RPC plus maybe a little bit more uh, structure, if I understand, but it's pretty much, it, it, it's roughly speaking, the RPC. Um, under the RSC function, the RSC function, the RSC is largely intended to function um, and have similar responsibilities as, as they have today under um, Neville's and Mike's. Uh, proposals, whereas in Brian's proposal, it becomes a strictly advisory function um, that reports to the um, uh, RFC series advisory working group um, and uh, advises both the RSAWG and the REP. Um, and then also under Brian's proposal, it, it's responsible, the, the RFC is responsible for documenting consensus. Um, under Martin's proposal, these functions are um, devolved into the, the, the open program, which I list as a working group, and also some go to uh, P, um, but that's about that, that little asterisk there, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, the strategic decisions, um, this is the one that Mike uh, took issue with, and this is a necessarily a summary of that. Um, is, is, you know, if you have a table, you only have so much real estate. Um, and here, uh, the strategic decisions under Neville's approach is, are, are largely based um, on the RFC series editorial board. Um, and Mike presented his, so his is more complete than what you see here. This is a very simple summary. Um, with Brian, these, these decisions happen in this advisory working group, and that is similar in nature to um, what Martin had to say. Um, and then, of course, there's this notion of strategic, which Martin drew out but in his presentation and is probably worthy of, of additional conversation. Um, for the oversight of the RSC and RSA, um, uh, we, we have the uh, LLC um, pretty much throughout, um, except for um, Martin, because he doesn't have one, he doesn't have this advisory role, um, but pretty much, uh, it's the LLC with, a, in Mike's case, an optional contractual monitor. Um, and you see two asterisks here because um, uh, in conversations with Brian, he, he thought he might wish to evolve his thinking a little bit as to exactly how this works. Um, the uh, selection process um, under Neville's proposal is through the LLC. Um, and with Mike's, is there's a search committee um, which is drawn from the uh, RCB and the LLC. Um, in um, Brian's model, you have the LLC again with, with two asterisks, and of course with Martin, since he doesn't have one of these, it's not applicable. Uh, for community engagement, uh, so the, the community would engage the RFC series editorial board along with uh, RF, the RFC interest list. Um, 
In Mike's proposal, there would be RFCB open meetings, uh, solicited input on uh, documents, um, uh, and um, he makes the point uh, that there's not a community consensus required for the um, RFC editor series uh, documents. Um, the um, under Brian, it's uh, all about an open working group, and this is the same with Martin. Um, for oversight um, and advisory group construction, um, under Neville's proposal, it's with the NOMCOM plus uh, some ex officio members. Um, with um, Mike, it is largely, and this is not entirely, it's, it's largely by the stream managers um, or representatives and some at large. Uh, participate or at large. I'd say that's pretty much the same as as the, it's nomcom and ex officio. Okay. Um, and then with Brian, it's open participation, but the stream managers are required. Uh, stream representatives are required to to be, be present, as is the RSA. And with Martin, it's open participation. Um, the chair selection Neville didn't get that far, as I understand. Um, but um, with uh, Mike's proposal, it's the RSC uh, and with, with ISC feedback uh, or fallback, rather, are the two uh, are the chairs. Um, Brian uh, recommends uh, co chair selected by the Board of Trustees from ISOC, whereas um, Martin pulls from the IAB. Um, and then I put in here minimum participation just in case like things got really quiet, who'd actually show up? Um, turns out, at least in this program, that hasn't been, but I looked at the numbers, there's been a fair amount of, of participation from the community. I don't have them at hand, but I, they're less scary than I was concerned about. It's not just, you know, a handful of people. Um, but the minimum participation under both Neville and uh, Mike's proposals are the RSEB uh, uh, members. In the case of Brian, it's the stream representatives plus the RSC plus the, the chairs. And um, in Martin's, it's the, the chairs. Now, presumably, that's something that could get fixed quick in terms of, you know, making sure that at least somebody, you know, a few people show up. And I can't imagine the stream managers and stream reps not wanting to show up. Yeah. So, um, Elliot, just to, just to clarify on this point, I didn't understand this point when you presented the summary to me, to me but mm -hmm. I, I think having the stream representatives um, required to participate in this program is, is sensible. I, okay. I don't think this is a major point. I, I don't think so either. I think this is one that, that we, could, you know, we were calculating that in, indeed somebody was showing up apart from the chairs um, at, at a minimum. And then for appeals chain, and this is um, something that uh, is probably- So, so just another, clarif another clarifying, so that sort of makes the minimum participation all the same, right? Um, pretty close to it once you say that. Yes, exactly right, Bob. Okay, good. Um, good catch. Um, the um, for the appeals chain, um, uh, this is something that's probably worthy of discussion. Um, there is um, no appeals that come out of the RSEB, and in discussions with Mike and Mike, please correct me if, if I'm misstating this. You didn't see. You weren't sure what there was to appeal in terms of that. Uh, discussion, um, and it, I guess it depends also on what you view as the, the decision points in, in process, and probably there's a little bit of um, uh, this, this, this line may be just a bit too brief. Yeah, um, let me hit that after you're done with this, and okay. I'll, I, I can explain a little bit more what I was thinking about that. Okay. Um, in Brian's draft, he calls out specifically the ISOC Board of Trustees for um, and these would be, I guess, for consensus calls. And of course, the oversight remains with uh, with the LLC. And I'm sure that would be the case for um, for all of these for 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 the for the RPC slash um, REP. IAB for the for the program that Martin designed. And so um, that's the table. And before I go any further, Mike, why don't you go ahead and bring your point across? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I thought I muted, so I apologies for the noise. Um, the The key thing here is is figuring out what can be appealed and 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 uh, over applying the IETF working group or process model 
to a group that has to make forward progress um, much faster than, than normal working groups do, or at least try to make more progress than normal working groups do, suggests that we leave the, we basically select the people and get out of their way and let them do the job. And the appeals chain, if you will, is to basically replace the streams manager if they're not doing what the streams tell them to do, or the at-large managers if they're not doing what the community tells them to do, um, rather than try and figure out how a another organization fits into that process with respect to what do what can they what what appeals can they cover? So um, we've already dealt with we've already I think dealt with the personnel things. Um, and said those aren't appealable. So I would then ask what's what's appealable with respect to the things that have gone gone out recently. Okay, before that gets answered, I'll just that's a good point for the discussion topics, which are just that's just coming up after this. I will add one more point of information and then I'll I'll stop. Um, in Brian's proposal, he has the ISOC Board of Trustees involved in, in two places. Um, this is a thing where we know we'll need, if, if, if they're going to be involved, we need to ask them. And the chairs have been in discussions with um, uh, Alyssa, and I had a formal, an informal conversation with Andrew about how to go about that. And we're still working through the exact right process. But if the group as a whole decides that this is a, something that needs to be explored, then we, we liaison to the ISOC Board of Trustees, either directly or through the IAB, depending on what guidance we're given from the IAB on that, um, in terms of getting answers as to whether or not they'd be willing. Um, but we'll also have to make sure we write out um, and review what we're sending to the Board of Trustees really carefully so that they understand what they're, they'd be signing up for. So that's, that's just informational at this point. And with that, I'll stop. And Brian has to unmute. There we go. The floor is open. So How are Alex, we using plus Q or what are we going to do for Q management? Yeah, there's no tool here. Um, uh, yeah, just use the Got it. it. Go ahead. That yeah, put your me. name. Put your name in WebEx chat, and I'll recognize you. Let's do it that way. WebEx says hand raise hand. Is it? Where? where yeah, is but, it? but only only um, Cindy can see that, and the, and you don't get an order. Um, so let's just use the plus Q, and you've yeah, got a yeah. Q going. Yeah, just just put it in the chat. Put your name in the chat, and we'll the WebEx chat, and we'll recognize you. Um, Martin's there. Martin, go ahead. I was, I was Martin, really waiting for recognition. Thank you. Um, so I think there's there's a couple of questions here that that really need to be addressed, and um, I think there's there's a bunch of things that I could talk about uh, with respect to the differences between what Brian has proposed and what I've proposed, and we could probably make progress there. But I think the bigger question that we need to address is the split between making uh, strategic long-term decisions about the evolution of the, of the series and getting all of the day-to-day -day tactical stuff out of the way and the different approaches that the um, different proposals have taken toward that. Um, I'll put my answer to that one out there at this point. I think that the, um, the folks doing the editing uh, need to be largely responsible for dealing with the, the tactical day-to-day -day issues. Those are the people who are responsible for delivering and, and meeting a particular um, performance target. And so um, they're in the best position and to, to do that. Uh, part of the problem that I think we've had in the past is that um, their, their performance targets have been uh, to some extent dependent on the performance of another entity. 
um, and the decision making processes around making those tactical decisions. And I think we can probably do a lot to, to alleviate that pressure by um, changing the nature of their, their contracts. So, um, and then, then we can have a, a process that is to the extent necessary um, or to the extent possible rather um, free from the pressures of having to resolve things in a timely fashion and we can concentrate on strategic issues, which is why I think the working group process can, can work for this one. I agree with Mike that a working group process for dealing with these tactical issues would be um, kind of a failure. Okay, thank you, Joel. Okay, uh, um, I have to disagree with several of the assumptions in Martin's statements. Trying to have the RPC deal with the decisions about how the series should function strikes me as failing on multiple grounds. For one thing, you have multiple editors operating quasi independently who are currently working by counting on being given consistent direction. That's great. Their line manager doesn't have any skill in this, and that's fine. They've had Heather and John now filling the role to give them the consistent direction. They, if you just take that away, you're making a drastic change in the job, including just telling them, hey, you get to figure out how you're supposed to get consistent answers from this. It is not at all obvious to me that this works in any meaning of works. On the obverse side, in terms of the expertise, we're going to need the expertise on an ongoing and regular basis. It's not ad hoc. We don't actually hire our lawyer on an ad hoc basis, and they don't participate on an ad hoc basis. And I think that trying to expect that this expertise, this person would need any time they were participating to know what people were assuming, what the culture was, so they could understand the questions properly. And it just, it's not an ad hoc activity. I think we need a persistent, consistent advisor, whether they have the authority or not is a different question, but I don't know how to make the RPC work without giving that person the authority to do the, that part of the job. Maybe you don't, they don't have the authority over the strategic part, but over the non-strategic, I don't want to say tactical because it's more than just tactical. It's things which have longer impact but are not strategic, I guess. I think we need to have somebody who can do that. A working group fails at doing that repeatedly. Thank you. Okay. Mike St. John's. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, so I looked at both Brian and Mark's present Mark's proposals and I got a little bit concerned Brian's because I don't know how the working group model where you have a charter, a fixed work plan, a people who have signed up for the documents um, schedules works for more than a couple, three, four, five years. We really try and kill working groups after a period of time rather than put them on life support for 20 years. So that's for Brian. With respect to um, Martin's one, programs are, the IEB programs have tended to be related to architectural technology and and um, uh, science, if you will. This tends to be a bit more operational in nature and has more of a, um, more of a uh, down and dirty or a, a, a production or, or, you know, get it done type of model that I don't know it is all that compatible with, with the, um, the programs model, so. Those are my comments on those. Feel free to yell at me for, for them. Lucy? So uh, I, I want to talk about two things. First, I think there's a tension here between ITF authors and their needs and the series and the strategies of publication and archive and external readers outside the IETF stream. And, and I don't think those 
are easy to resolve. And these proposals seem in some part to represent the frustrations of authors and authoring tools versus long-term record of consensus and the series and the archive. Who speaks for the series here is really important to me. I'm not an author, I'm a consumer. So, so that's an important issue to me. The other thing I'll, I'll speak to is the issue of ISOC and whether or not they have a role here. I think because they have both an international set of chapters who are readers and consumers, and because they have a group of commercial supporters who are longtime investors in the ITF, that they're probably an appropriate group here to look to. Um, if I was to think of somebody else outside of this, it would be the NRO or the IGF, all of whom are more problematic than ISOC in terms of our relationships. And I'll just leave that there. Okay, uh, Bob Hendon. Hi, um, I had two, two sort of thoughts. Um, one is that I, Working groups in the style of IHF working groups do do some things really well, but I don't actually think they make strategic decisions very well at all. We see this a lot in groups who try to get consensus on architecture documents, and many times, you know, the documents are abandoned, and the working group is great at doing a protocol, or, you know, a solution, but. At least when I think of strategic, I, I don't think that fits into a working group at all. I think you need people who have a stake in the outcome. I think some of the other proposals are better. Um, the other comment is, I think that history, I don't think the IAB should have any major role in this at all. Um, so I, you know, I think there's a couple other choices and we should go with those and we don't, um, uh, again, I, I think the, the IAB has had their opportunity here and um, didn't, I'll be polite, didn't do very well. So, thank you. Okay, John, uh, Jay Daly. Thanks, so uh, I'm obviously not gonna give an opinion on any of the drafts, but I just want to explain something that's currently happening in practice so that you are aware of this um, and can f factor it into your thinking. One of the things that um, happened when uh, Heather was the RSE was that um, authors would come along and say, well, I'd like to be able to do this or I'd like to be able to do that. And the XML and the, um, uh, the tools didn't support that. And a discussion took place um, with effectively Heather giving the um, yes, no. Sorry, someone's lots of background noise. Um, Heather was the person who gave the yes, no as to whether or not that was implemented. Um, and there was um, uh, a lot that Heather would, uh, I'm told, understand about that. There were some elements of the underlying architecture and implementation about things that um, the way those things are done that would be outside of her skill set. Um, now that we have John in post, that's not actually part of John's role um, to do that, to, to be that decision maker about those things. And so for quite some time, we had um, these questions coming in, going to the RPC. The RPC doesn't see itself as the decision maker about that as well. And it then falling on um, Henrik's plate as the developer and Henrik um, being in the unenviable position of making decisions about those things. And so in order to address that um, temporarily, um, there is now a, a small group that includes John in his role, includes Henrik in his role, Robert Sparks as the tool team PM, and um, Peter St. Andre from the RSOC, that is the triage um, group, that when these requests come in, they're the ones that are now deciding whether or not that means that a change has to take place to the V3 XML or a change has to take place to one of the tools or whether the working group author is told, no, you can't insert this within that, within that, within this. Um, and so that that is an operational role at the moment that is, you know, a sort of weekly basis type of thing that's taking place. So I just wanted you to be aware of that particular process. Okay, thank you. Hacker. Yeah, so I guess three points. Um, 
One, um, I've heard a lot about strategy and how we have to have strategy. Um, I'd really be interested in understanding what that is in a concrete sense. Um, you know, given that it seems to me that many of the working groups we do set strategy for the entire internet. And so it seems to be setting a strategy for like a bunch of things we put on paper probably is like actually a substantially smaller problem. So I'm not persuaded that working groups can't do that. Um, so if someone can give me some examples of strategy consists of, I'd be very appreciative. Um, second, um, I think Lucy raised the point of the series versus the authors. Um, uh, I don't really know what the series is meaningfully. I mean, it's a set of documents. Um, I think it, primarily what we're trying to do is publish technical specifications. And so the community for that is the people are writing them and the people implementing and consuming them. And um, so I, I guess I'm not sure, it's certainly like not really clear how um, we assemble a community that speaks for that of the people doing the writing and the people that they talk to um, and that send them feedback on their documents and implement, implement all of which we have in the working groups. Um, Third, um, I think there's there seems to be this like cut that people are trying to draw one way or the other um, between whether this um, RS star position is a advisor or whether they're ahead of ahead of once again this word strategy, um, and I think that that um, uh, to some, some extent interlocks with the governance question of how um, of how this person is engaged. So, um, for to give a concrete example, um, you know, like the LLC hires a lawyer. And we don't like, and, and like, there's not like a lot of community input on how the LLC hires a lawyer. And if, if, if he doesn't like how lawyers, lawyers behaving, like, you know, Jake gets rid of them. Um, but on the other hand, um, you know, uh, you know, we expect Jay to decide to make up our strategic decisions. We have a bunch of community governance on how Jay gets selected. Um, so um, I, I think that that's, so, so I think, you know, um, Mike and I had a bunch of back and forth about how much sort of um, independence the, um, the RSC or the RSA would have. And I think, um, you know, um, the, m the more sort of independent authority the, the, uh, um, that person has, as opposed to advisory um, position, the more important it is for them to be subject to community governance. Uh, Martin Thompson. So now that we've talked about a diverse grab bag of topics in this thing, and I see that I'm at the bottom of the queue, thanks, Mark. Um, I'd like to ask what, which one of these issues are the most pressing for people because I don't see us in the remaining time that we have making significant progress on every single one of the 20 or so issues that I heard raised. Um, I, I raised the, the strategy tactics split um, and we then got into working groups and who's responsible for what and oversight and all sorts of things. Um, is, there, is there any single topic that you think um, this pivots on. Right, I'm going to take that. Let's swing at that. Um, the intent of the chairs was for us to recognize, first of all, that whichever draft that way forward, um, that there were going to be issues that needed to be resolved. And you're right, Martin, we can't resolve them all on the call today. Um, but what we're hoping to focus down on is which one of these drafts, which one starting point, recognizing again that whatever in there could be, you know, issues will be open and the text would be changed based on the consensus of the group. This was the intent of the chairs. Brian, do you want to add to that? Oh, uh, th that's, that's exactly right. Um, our goal today is to pick a starting point. We can take pieces from the other proposals um, as as we proceed, um, but our but our goal is our goal for this meeting was to is is to see whether there was consensus on 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 one of these as the best starting point. If there isn't, then we'll try something else. But uh, that's our goal. Um, Mark Nottingham. Oh, did you, uh, no, did you, did you want to, I don't see you. Yeah, yeah, you are, you're in the queue. So yeah. I added myself and then I removed myself. So ah, I, I, okay. All right. So um, Martin Thompson, you put yourself back in. Did you want to go back in? I, I was just saying that in, in, in light of that goal, now that I understand what you're trying to achieve, I think it would be useful for us to understand what people's, um, uh, what people think with respect to the the three, I think, viable proposals that are on the table and what of particular proposals they find particularly objectionable that would cause that proposal to be in, invalid in their, in their eyes. And um, 
I guess I will start by saying that I think that Mike's suggestion for, for closed bodies um, is um, absolutely um, unacceptable in my opinion. I think we need to, to root this in, in public discourse. Anyone else want to get in the queue? We have, you know, about five more minutes before uh, we're we're going to want to try and take some homes. Um, just to sort of sort to help sort things a little bit. Let me just ask. I think Neville. I think if I understand correctly, in terms of your proposal, you would you would view Mike sort of as a more fleshed out uh, fleshed out version of yours, and maybe you would you, you, you maybe. Or, or 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 vote for you know, vote is the wrong word, but prefer to to advance either either Mike's or or Brian's or or something like that instead. Is that correct, Neville? That is right. I'd be very happy to go for one of the others. Okay. Now, the other thing we've heard, just to make it clear, so that really does bring us down to three. Um, the other thing that I think we heard is that there's very, there's really very little difference between Martin and um, Brian's proposals. Um, so now the only question, I guess what I'll do is I'll say, let me, let me, I'll put this two ways. Martin, do you think you could live with Brian's as a starting point? I can, I can say that I would be, um, I'd be comfortable starting with Brian's on the understanding that there are, I think, two major points of difference that that we'd have to work through. But but on that understanding, I would be I'd be comfortable with you making this a call between what Mike has proposed and what Brian has proposed. So now we're down to hopefully. And by the way, I think that's a reasonable approach um, to say, cause the, the, those are major issues. And I, you know, I think we have to work towards rough consensus on, on resolving them. Um, now I think we're down to the, to, to two under that, without understanding. Does anybody disagree from that point of view? Okay. Um, Ecker. Yeah, I, I really want to eliminate Martin's proposal so quickly. Um, I mean, if we want to say that everything between everything between Mike, between Martin and Brian's proposal is undecided, and we're going to pick Brian's as a starting point with all the, with every every difference marked as an open issue marker, then I don't because I don't care who's in the document. But if this constitutes having, um, you know, this constitutes having uh, uh, um, a default assumption of any piece any difference, then no, I'm not okay with that. I a, a possible way out would be, well, yeah. we, we could first take a hum to see whether people prefer Mike's or one of Martin or Brian. And then if that goes the Martin or Brian way, take another hum for which one of the two. Would that be all right with you? I suppose I could live with that. Um, as I say, I guess what, I, what I'm trying to avoid here is the assumption that things that are in these documents are pre-decided and have to and, and require a lot of work to change, which is typically the way that things end up when things are in document, things are written down. And so, as I said, I'd be perfectly happy to have Brian's with like the difference is having open issue markers, so they're not decided. But what I'm trying to avoid is the presumption that just because we pick Brian's as a starting point, that that is that those right. are, those are, those that need to be changed. I contest is a change. Okay, uh, and, I, I, I and, think that's a fine thing to do. I, I, I think that we can leave the, if we if we make this a, a two way hum, and you know we're in WebEx, we don't really have a hum tool. Um, if if we if we make this a two way decision, where we with the with the understanding that if if we're going the 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 Brian Martin. Um, direction that the differences between them are expressly open issues to be decided later by consensus, then I, I think that would be fine. And obviously, chairs would like to get this down to a two-way because it's easier to judge consensus. That's all. I, I, so this is Lucy. Yes. And I would be unwilling to hum on one versus two. I would not hum for any of those. And what 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 would you want to do going forward? 
Uh, I, I would uh, hum between documents, but the one versus two leaves too much on the table. I think there are items in Mike's document that are worthy of consideration. If I had to choose, I'd probably be picking Brian's document at this point, which I think can evolve in a direction I'm interested in. Martin's document, I think, uh, leans a little too much in, in an IETF author centric direction. Um, and I'm happy to talk about that, but I, d I don't think you resolve this by, by putting one against two. Okay. Um, uh, well, there are, people, are there other people who agree with Lucy that, that trying to do this as uh, a two a two way uh, uh, what are we starting for, from uh, expressly saying the differences between the two of them uh, if we go Martin whatever our uh, Martin and and Brian are expressly um, items to be worked on recognizing this is the standard ITF process we can start with Mike's and make and it may end up a lot closer to Brian's than where we started from. That, that's always going to be our process. That is the way the IETF works. We're going to run it that way. But is there, are there other people that have the same concerns that Lucy does about make, starting with a two-way um, decision? I think let's I share Lucy's concerns. Let's just restate what the two-way means. It means, um, and, and Brian, tell me if I, I, I got this wrong or right. It means we hum first for Mike's proposal uh, as opposed to one of either Martin's or Brian's. And then the next time would be, if, if it's Martin or Brian's, then the next time would be which of those two. If it's Mike's, then we're done. Correct? Well, that wasn't the way we, where it wasn't where I was heading, but we certainly can do that. Um, the way I thought we were heading was we 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 do a simple two way hum. We start with Mike's or Brian's, and the assumption with Brian's is the differences between Martin and Brian's are expressly open items to be decided by the work group. If that's oh. the direction we go. Okay. Which I think Martin said he was happy with. I'm left very confused because I don't know what I would be expecting uh, hey guys, in the starting document. Guys, there's people in the queue. Sorry? Uh, you've got a bunch. You've got Rich, Mike, and, uh, and John in the queue. All right. Um, Rich, speak. Uh, yeah. Um, is it asking too much for Martin and Brian to come up with a single document that just lists the open questions as Brian has done in other documents? And then it, we confirm on the list which way we want to go? Certainly possible if that's what we want to do. This is the other Brian. Um, that, that was actually a question. The RFC it's, it's really not hard work to do that. Yeah, that was really a question to the authors. Um, I think it's premature, um, and I think ahead, you're Mike. passing it on to me. Is that right, Brian? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, what I'd rather see is the chairs to go back on that table that you started with and maybe expand it a little bit. And actually, we we got we got five or four or five of those lines that basically look the same across all the proposals. So why don't we figure out what's common between all of these things first? Get those off the table. And then we can go back and actually continue with the discussions on the items that are there rather than pick one of these things as a winner or a loser. Among other things, from my point of view, I'm feeling a little bit like, like uh, the guy standing in front of the doors uh, um, on let's make a deal and dealing with the Monty Hall um, paradox. So, um, I, I, I do want to point out that um, we spent a long time uh, at the uh, last actual ITF meeting, uh, trying to figure out how to get some consensus in one direction or other. Um, w we tried hard with this one to set up something that we could get some consensus on moving forward. And in 15 minutes, 
we're not going to accomplish what you want, which means that we would end this meeting with no consensus on anything. Um, I You're not going to end up on consensus at the end of this meeting anyways. You have to go back to the list. Uh, uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, we can't, uh, of course. We always are going to go back to the list. We're not going to end up with any final decision here. But you're you're suggesting that, and you know we can we can see what happens on the list. It's very hard to judge consensus on the list. It can be done. Um, with this kind of group, we're likely to be at the next interim meeting before we make any any actual decisions. Um, we had um, uh, John Clemson. Yeah, I, I want to go back to where we were quite a while ago and largely agree with Lucy. Uh, I think an effort to um, identify differences, and real differences on the documents and get that recorded would be worthwhile and at the same time get recorded where the areas agreement are. But I think that trying to pit these documents against each other and say then we're going to go argue about where the uh, the differences are and what to do with them is uh, is 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 a path toward preempting one point of view or another. Uh, I have serious disagreements with uh, in some of the areas where Brian and Martin disagree. I have serious disagreements in some of the areas where Mike's document disagrees, especially with Martin's, but to some degree with Brian's. And uh, and I don't think it's uh, it's a reasonable way to proceed, however desirable it might be, to say we have to reach consensus on something. And therefore, we're going to start making arbitrary judgments. Uh, and I think if we can't figure out a mate reach consensus on mailing lists, uh, with some of the efforts which have been suggested about doing some consolidation among the authors, then uh, then this effort is dead. Uh, because saying that we're going to wait until the next thing or a meeting and make con and reach consensus there, and then hope the mailing list agrees, is just not how the ITF does business. Um, I think you are, you, you have succeeded in frustrating chairs quite a bit. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> so, Why are they um, big bucks? yes, clearly, um, I, at this point, I, I would like to run a three way. Hum, uh, and, and it is, uh, start with. Uh, Mike, start with Martin's or don't decide today. Let me make a suggestion there. Sure. For each one of these, um, both ways, acceptable, uh, how much you can accept it, how much you can't accept it. You're, you're going to get six hums. Okay. That's. That's that's a that's a reasonable thing to do. Brian, Brian, so you said start with Mike's, start with Martin's. I was assuming you meant start with Brian's. Um, it's yeah, Brian. start with Mike, start with Brian's, and start uh, or or not ready was was okay. what. Yes, yeah. that my three way was start with Mike, start with Brian, or not ready to decide. And then Mike tried to amend that to be. Um, and I wasn't quite sure I could follow it, but it's 2.20 in the morning here, so I might not be able to. I, I, I want to start with Mike. I absolutely refuse to start with Mike. I want to start with Brian. I absolutely refuse to start with Brian's. Okay. Or, or, or with Martin. Or, or, I, or Martin's. Yeah. yeah we right. can do with Martin's. We're, Wait, we're, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I do think that the, this, the, um, I rather not hum all three way between all three drafts. Like, I think we understand that Brian and Martin think they can work out some of their differences and leave the open issues. Like, I get, I get the people like, like yeah. we're not voting today. Like, so like this is like, do we want to ask them to go do that with the presumption that yeah. they do it acceptably or they take it? Okay. Would people be and would people be comfortable just typing in this information into the, like the the WebEx chat? Is that is that okay? Would anybody object to that? 
because the hums are going to be really hard on, on, on WebEx. This is, on an, this is giving up an a, a, anonymity, right? Are you all right with typing your answer into the into the chat? I'm all right with it, but you're going to have a mess trying to figure out what you've gotten. Oh, well, we have a record of it. We can figure it out. There's not that many here. people here. We can we can count. I have a bot that we're can gonna... do it for you real quick. All right. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to chat. Brian, Mike, or not today. Brian, Mike, or not today. A lot of people haven't voted. Please take, let, let us hear your opinion. It would really be helpful if we could figure out something here. If we're not ready, we're not ready, but I'd like to know that we're not ready. All right. I see very few relative to the number of people in this meeting. We have not a lot, I've got less than half, I think. All right, we'll take what we got. Um, so, so Brian, can I uh, request that we um, try to test for objections? One of the, one of the usual ways we, we do with these things is if there's, some, if there's some hard objection that someone has, or some issue that they, they think needs to be resolved with a particular proposal, we, we test for that as well. That might give us a path. I would very much like to hear from the not today people to say what will get them to be today the next time. Because I think that's where we are. I think we have enough not readies that that's where we are. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, we, we definitely don't have a consensus. Let's say that we could, you know, we're not voting. We have no consensus. Yeah, so I'd like to hear from, you know, I think we heard a suggestion that people would like to go to, to, to just take the chart that I, that I did, recognize the commonalities and ask the, the proposers of the various, the, one of the things we can do is ask the, the people who are doing who are put together proposals um, first of all you can combine informally you don't need the chair's permission to combine right um and second um you can update on um what you what you think you've learned from the others but what could we take this a few minutes for the people who are not ready to say what they need to be ready he's got a cue Joel, you're in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joel. Okay, I'll I'll try to answer that. I, I'm going to answer it backwards, though. The problem I have is that there are critical things I that that, as far as I can tell, are central to the approach of at least two of the three drafts that I think are have have serious problems. I therefore I can't say either of either Mike's or Martin's are things that I'm comfortable with as a starting point since things that I think they take as critical bases, I disagree with. I, the problem I have is I don't have a good answer up my sleeve. I don't know how to find an answer that, that avoids either of the extremes they lay out. And Brian's just ducks the important questions, which yeah, you can start from that, but it doesn't actually help. So I wasn't, I didn't feel it was worth saying I'll take Brian's because I don't think it would solve anything. The, 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 just an observation that because you haven't sent text and no one else is stepping up to deal with the issues you're raising, you're, you're not helping. Right? Uh, Brian, I realize that and I wish <laughs> I could do better, but not knowing an answer doesn't mean I, I must okay. perforce like somebody else's. All right, um, I got it, Ben. Yeah, I think that 
one of the aspects that causes me to not be ready to make a decision at this point is that I don't understand, um, well, so to pr basing on Elliot's table, we have you know, several areas where there's differences between the, the drafts or, or collections of drafts. Uh, and what I don't have right now is an understanding of to what degree those areas of difference are fundamentally intertwined or if they are separable. And so if there's a question of, you know, does the working group like structure need to have some public engagement or public exposure um, that may be a separa separable thing uh, as opposed to sort of the structure of how the membership is chosen might have some particular details that are, are coupled. Um, and so I would be more comfortable if we had a, do we want to start with A versus B if we knew that all or most of the differences between A and B were sort of fundamentally correlated differences and there were not additional things that we could tease apart and discuss as separate orthogonal issues. Okay. Um, Wes? So I was trying to think of like, you know, concrete ways out of situations like this and, and there are many times in the ITF where this has worked and where it hasn't. Um, you know, Elliot's table, I think, had a great summary of, of what matched. I like the idea of sort of expanding upon that more. And that sort of got me to think along the lines of, well, we, if we're down to, you know, two drafts to, to possibly merge together, maybe one option is to actually merge the commonality points or the points that are agreed upon, throwing out everything else and then saying adopting that as, as sort of a base framework upon which we need to add everything else back in. And it's essentially creating a list of topics, you know, that must go in, you know, before it's ready to be done done. Um, but in the meantime, if you could actually get all of your existing and I think, you know, there's a number of existing um, consensus items that have been worked through over the past six months or whatever it's been, just getting those consensus points down into a starting document and then building upon that and getting maybe a couple of authors to contribute equally, maybe Brian and Mike, for example. Okay. Uh, good suggestion, possible. Uh, John Clinton. I find myself largely agreeing with, uh, with Ben and, and Wes. Um, I, I feel like I need to see the differences which we have been talking about uh, more clearly articulated than the than the chart shows. Although I think the chart is a is a huge starting point. Um, uh, following on Wes's comment, I think one of the things that might be considered is seeing if you can find a neutral editor, whatever neutral means in this highly controversial space to start consolidating these three documents in areas where we really have agreement and make certain we do, and then try to fold the places which we, where we don't have agreement into that new document uh, one thing at a time. I don't know if that's feasible. I don't know if you can find such a human being who would be willing to put up with the abuse, but it might be a way forward with some of this. Okay, thank you. Um... Um, uh, if I may, uh, just a, a chair's comment. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it is possible to um, do what Wes suggested. And the reason is that the uh, philosophical basis, if you will, the underpinnings of where Mike started versus where uh, Martin and uh, Brian started are, are quite different. It might be possible, and that's something I think that the, the we as a as a group have to think a little bit about. I don't want to just leave that on the chairs, um, and and something we'll have to discuss in in mail. So I'll stop, but I just did want to make that comment. It's not a, it's not a slam dunk to do what Wes suggested. I didn't say it'd be easy. Thanks, Elliot. I agree. I do agree with that. Let's see. Who else do we have here? Um, Mike? Bob and then Mike. And then Martin. Oh, Bob. Sorry, I did. I skipped Bob. Yeah, it's easy to miss the cue. Um, yeah, I think I like the idea, though I realize it is hard, of let's try to get, figure out which things there is some agreement on 
separate that out from the things that there isn't, because then we can talk about them. I talk about the differences more specifically, and we may be able to reach some compromise or something. Um, I think that given the current situation, I think that would be better than um, just trying to pick documents. Okay. Uh, uh, I think that's me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, just responding to Elliot, one of the things I wanted to actually say was I actually think my my proposal is probably closer to Brian's than Brian's is closer to than than Brian's is to Martin, even though they started from the same document. Um, the main thing here is the question of the the composition of the management board, editorial board, whatever you want to call it. Um, but everything else is sort of a um, there's somebody that we hire that's important that that's working this process on our behalf even when we're sleeping a little more time by the way right the the meeting is going to go for another half hour um so um it's, uh, martin then ecker so john can you move please Thanks. Um, the, I, I thought we, we were having a discussion at this point about, I, th I think, probably just two issues. And this goes back to, to Ben's question of what, what differences are we here to resolve? And it wasn't clear what those were to, to Ben. But I, I think, to me at least, the issues were very clear. And, th and that was the, the, uh, the choice between choosing Mike's draft or Brian's draft that was presented to us was, uh, I thought, a decision to um, go for a closed board versus a, an open participation working group style um, decision-making process. Uh, and if we could make a decision about that, um, which drives a lot of the rest of the system, um, and I, I think a lot of the designs differences between those two drafts is, is driven primarily by that, then we make progress. Um, Going to do what Wes suggested um, is nice, but it's the sort of busy work that we give people when they can't decide. So they can sort of build this rapport that you get when you start agreeing with people. And um, it's a great brainwashing technique, basically. And, and it does actually help people build that um, thing in a, in a working group. But I don't think we need to do that. I thought we were really close to actually getting to the point where we were making that decision. but. Maybe that's just me. All right. Um, uh, Ecker. Um, yeah, um, I'm trying to decide if we're just chewing up this 30 minutes or if we're doing anything useful. Um, sounds like it sounds like there's some thought that the others might go off and try to do some mergers. Um, and we, could have, we, we have this discussion then. Um, but um, uh, like, um, is there some topic we actually can discuss here that is useful, or are we just going to argue about like how we're not going to pick one out of these lists? Because I'd like to have dinner if the answer is the second. Yes. Um, so there was a suggestion to try and um, uh, see whether what kind of consensus we have on the primary difference between the two of them, which is um, uh, the who oversees, right? Is there a working group or a board? Um, uh, that isn't the only difference, um, but it is a difference. Um, we could we could try that. We could see where people uh, people vote, or we can we can be in. You know, we can we can. Boy, there you go. Um, we can be done for today and take the path of trying to uh, uh, trying trying to figure out if we um, uh, merge mer find a, find an editor merge what we can merge and see if we can work for, on consensus from there. Um, uh, we do have a half an hour or twenty five minutes. Um, we could try to see where people stand on that on that one issue. Um, a board or a, a working group. Um, 
there are others. I mean, we could that that you you picked one you thought that was the most important. There are other people who think other other things. It's actually MT who picked that one. Yeah, I have some others. Yeah, <laughs> right. There are others, um, but it's it's always nice to get some consensus, right? There, it, it 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 would be good to and ex, to exit the meeting with having accomplished something instead of spend another two hours not getting anything done. Um, not getting anything done is unfair. We're, we're clearly understanding each other more than we have been. Um, we're, having, we're having good discussions. We're having uh, people, people know where people stand on things. Their questions have been asked and answered. We have made progress. I'm not, not saying we didn't make any progress. Um, but um, uh, is there, is there, are, are there enough people who want to actually try and figure out where, where we stand on, on an issue like is there a board or a, uh, a work group, or would you like to just stop? I see several okay. people saying stop. Uh, I think I want to summarize just a little bit before we stop. Um, and just just to be clear as to what our next steps are, right? This is part of our agenda, right? I I would like to see the proposals wheedle down quite frankly to to two at this point and that e and, and that i'd like us to focus on the differences between the two and that i would like us to be to the point where we're ready to adopt an, a, a draft within a month in order to get in order to move things forward and martin's right that there are pretty much two major differences to be perfectly frank brian carpenter i do not see um you know, a major difference between, you know, I think it's a, a, a resolvable problem as to whether to the ISOC BOT or through the IAB in the case, in the differences between um, you and Martin. Um, Mike, I don't know if I agree with you about, uh, with, with you and John, but it may not matter too much. What I'd like you guys to do is just focus down on, on um, seeing, seeing if you can look at this slide, seeing what you find that that, that is in common. Um, and then discuss that part which you would change on list. We do that much, and then we'll take this forward from uh, from the back again as we approach the next. Um, actually, we're going to approach the next IETF if we're not if we don't do another interim. Uh, are people thinking an in, an, an interim before one one oh nine is useful, or should we just wait for one oh nine? We're going to make, I, I, I would make that call based on whether we can make progress. On the list. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. All right. All right. Well, we know what we're doing. Thank, Thank you all you very much. much. Actually, hey, Brian, before you guys go. Anybody? Yeah. Um, one of the things that Heather did was make sure that this was not a one shot deal with and and she did separate separate time zones. I noticed a good third of the folks who signed up on the on the doodle poll were not couldn't do it because of the time uh, because it couldn't do it because of the time zone um, or because of other things going on. You may want to think about trying to do one more of these things. Again, I'll show up even if it's in the middle of the night. But to be fair, you want to make you want to avoid as much as possible the self-selection problem. So, yeah, thank, thanks. Appreciate for the comment, your, Mike. Yeah. Okay. I, I would comment if people cared about this enough, this would be their number one thing. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I don't think people care about it this enough, but we'll see. Um, all right. Thank you all very much for, for your comments and uh, your honesty. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye and good evening. Bye.